Hi, I'm Karen K. Buckley and I'd like to tell you about my perfect ovals. The ovals are made from a heat resistant plastic so that you can work with a dry medium heat setting on your iron. And there are 10 different sizes, two of each size in the package, and they range from 3 quarters of an inch to 1 and 5 eighths on the long side of the oval. With the package you will receive directions and it gives all the details on how to use this product, but I am going to explain that here in just a few seconds. Just want to give you a quick, what do I do with this oval shape? You can see on the cover here, I use them for grapes. I do a lot of flower petals that are created with oval shapes. And so I find these shapes very useful in both of those places. And I'm betting you'll find even more uses. Once I've determined the size oval that I need, based on my pattern, I'll pull that from my pack and I've already done this step to save a little time. I lay this on the back of the fabric I've traced around it. Then I cut it with a quarter inch or slightly smaller seam allowance. Then I want a heavy thread. I used a quilting thread here. You don't want to use a wimpy thread is what I call it, but something that will hold up because I'm going to have to pull hard on here and I don't want the thread to break. Start it with a knot and I want to do a running stitch on the smaller side. Don't turn this into a basting stitch or that doesn't work as well. So a nice little running stitch outside the line I drew but inside my raw edge, right between the raw edge and the line that I drew. I stitched until I got back to the knot and then I'm going to position the oval on the back of the fabric, hold on and pull. And the fabric wraps itself right up over the edge of my oval shape. I'm not finished quite yet. I want to flip it onto the back and I pull the thread over to the opposite side of where I finished stitching and I wrap the tail of thread around my left hand and hold it very tightly. I call it the death grip. I do not want this to pop open. The next step is you've taken a large amount of fabric and you've brought it into a smaller area and it creates gathers and you don't care that the gathers are there. You just don't want them on this outside edge. So I always take my fingers like this and just rub those edges to make sure all the gathers are pushed in and that I have a nice smooth outside edge. Holding on with that death grip, I want to drop this down onto my ironing surface. I'm going to grab my stencil brush. I'm dipping it into the sizing. I prefer sizing over starch. I found the sizing gave me a nice crisp edge but didn't leave any of that cakey residue on the back of the fabric. I'm going to grab my iron, which is on a dry, medium heat, and just position it right over top of my seam allowance on the back side. It's going to sit here for approximately 20 seconds to allow the sizing to dry. You must dry the sizing for this to hold the shape. Generally what I do is while the iron is sitting here by itself, I would have the next oval shape or possibly a circle shape and I would be doing the running stitch in that one while this one is drying. So I kind of create a little assembly line process for myself when I'm working with this process. And I like to just let the iron sit by itself. You don't need to push down hard on the iron. That doesn't help. It's just the heat that dries it, not the pressure. I'm going to lift my iron and you can touch this immediately. It will not burn you. It's warm, but it's not. And I'm just checking. It has to be completely dry. I'm just double checking and I believe it is. So I'm going to grab onto that tail and give it a little tug just so I can see where I finished my stitching. And I just want to say this now because I forgot to say it earlier. One of the things I found on the ovals is that where I started and stopped made it easier. I find if I start and stop down on this longer side as opposed to the short ends that it was easier to do the process. So I'm on this longer side. That's where I started. Give it a little tug. Now I'm going to loosen the seam. Remove this oval because I will have it to reuse over and over and over again. And then I'm gently going to grab that tail and just start just sort of gradually, very gently pull on it. And it pulls it right back the way that it was pressed. Then I'm coming in with my scissors and I'm going to just clip that tail of thread. And I'm going to flip this over so you can see it's just this perfect oval shape. And now it's ready to be hand or machine applique onto my background.